There's nobody there. Nobody's watching us yet. Maybe we're early. Well, I was going to say, because you're not on yet, are you? Nobody there, nobody's watching. Oh no, Sue's there, even if she's in the same room as us, <laughs> Harry. <laughs> oh, Sharon Farr. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Gillian. Gillian's obviously got reception. We're not going to go with the poor Harry because it hurts. Hi, Fiona. I'll just wait for a few more people. Hi, Dylan. Harry doesn't look very impressed, does he? Hi, Joanna. I managed to get Harry in this time. Oh. Hi, Dylan. do that hi Bobby hi Martin hi Fiona that's it typical Harry he's actually cleaning himself behind my head he's a, <laughs> he's a bugger Got a bit of an audience tonight, actually. It's really weird. I'm doing this. And they're watching it on their phone instead of watching us. I look, Harry's doing an Elvis lip. So, without that falling over, I'm going to start off before uh, telling you the story. And Sue's going to try not to laugh, but I don't think... Auntie Sue's going to be able not to laugh because she's already started already. Uh, something that happens um, today to me. And Harry wasn't involved at all. And I was... We, we go on holiday tomorrow and while we're away it's going to be Halloween and there's going to be a big uh, Halloween festival while we're away. And... I was looking for an, an old Halloween costume that I have, which <clears throat> is stored down in what we refer to as the playpen, which is where we, we store Christmas decorations and everything. And I, as I walked in, and it's quite a big place, and as I walked in, I could hear what I thought was tweeting. So it was like squeaking like a bird's nest. So I thought some birds had actually nested in um, the, the playpen so I tippy toed over to where I thought I could hear them and stopped and the noise stopped which means obviously they would have heard me in there shuffling around so they decided to to uh, stop tweeting so I went to another bits of the playpen and I could hear the squeaking as I went over and I thought Blimey, there's got to be two birds' nests in here. And I tippy-toed over, and as I got closer, the noise stopped again. So, again, I just assumed to myself that uh, they, they'd heard me moving around, so um, decided to, to stop making the noise. So I thought, well, I couldn't find what I was looking for, so I decided to leave. And as I was walking... I heard the squeaky kind of tweeting noise again only to discover that it was actually my left welly <laughs> that was squeaking and it wasn't a bird's nest at all it was every time that I was walking it was the squeaking of my welly um, and there were, no, there were no birds at all, so I came back to the house, slightly embarrassed by what had just happened, uh, told Harry's Auntie Sue, 
who promptly burst out laughing. Um, and then I told Harry's Uncle Graham and Hugh Mumsy as well while, while we were having dinner. So that was my embarrassing moment today. Um, <laughs> which uh, it does happen. It happens to everyone, I'm sure. But uh, if you hear some squeaking, maybe it's not birds. Maybe it's your boots or your shoes that are squeaking. And of course, the squeaking's going to stop every time you stop walking. So just, just be just be aware of that because it is a bit embarrassing when you admit it to other people. Um, so tonight's story is about Harold. Um, it's a true story. Some of you may have read it on his website, www.spanielharry.co.uk, where there's uh, lots of interviews, lots of stuff to do with charities, and also lots of uh, stuff that Harry has got up to over the years on there. Um, and this one happened a few years ago, just after we'd moved down to Devon. And at that time, Harry had gone through two... Uh, cruciate operations on his back legs. So this is the story. And it's written by Harry. But this time round I've actually translated it and typed it out into human from dog so that I'm not trying to uh, interpret it. So, well, I had a visit to the house yesterday from not one but two very, very nice men. Well, I say nice, the second one was a bit grumpy, but then I had gotten overexcited and peed on his boots, but that's another story and a little embarrassing. I blame the cold air and lack of fur round my back end due to my operations and the boss going loony with the clippers. You will understand this if you have bought my book, Help My Dogs, on Twitter. Anyway, back to the story. So two vans pulled up and the boss said they were from BT to put a new phone in the house. You see, we had just moved to Devonia and whilst there was one line in, which is a business line, we needed a home number too, apparently. All incredibly boring if you ask me and I wish I had not asked at all. So I got all excited as above and was woofing and howling and Maggie, my sister, was following my lead, no pun intended. After the incident with the peeing on the man's boot, I felt I should really make an effort to make friends with him again and show him that I really am a nice dog and that the barking and howling and then the peeing on him was really just me being pleased to meet him. So, I thought, I know I will bring him a gift. Now, what gift would you take someone you had peed on? I thought about taking him a tennis ball, but they are mine, and I share them with no one, peed on or not peed on. I went and got a pulley toy, but Maggie grabbed the end of it, and whilst I was tempted to take her to him as a gift and have the boss's affections and love all to myself, I don't think the boss would be happy. And Maggie had already jumped up at him and made him go, oof, something to do with the crown jewels, not sure. Now, the boss had been doing something with washing in the utility room. And she had stupidly left a basket on the floor as she had gotten distracted by the woofing and the oofing and peeing. I seized my opportunity what better gift to give a strange man that I had peed on than something belonging to the boss? After all, I as, her, I as her dog, so the boss should pay a penalty too. So I snuffled in the basket. Socks? Nah, too boring. Sheets? No, too big. T-shirt? No, I always trip on them. Aha! There it was. The perfect gift in the basket. The perfect gift for the man. I grabbed the gift in my mouth and went off to find him. 
Luckily, he was outside, so I went up to him, clutching his gift, and gave it to him. He took it gently from my mouth and said, Good boy. Then he realised what it was. Well, the boss came out with a cup of tea for him and his mate to find him stood there clutching his gift from me. A lovely pair of the boss's knickers. <laughs> the man went very red and the boss looked shocked. The man tried to explain as best he could what had happened as he gingerly handed them back to the boss, who was also bright red by this point. Boss tried to explain that I was always taking stuff from the washing basket. Needless to say, I got dragged inside and all for giving what I think was the perfect gift to someone I had barked and peed on. I don't get humans at all, but I guess us dogs are all fur and no knickers. <laughs> so that is a true story and that's exactly what young Harry did to, to the man from BT. And uh, when we tweeted uh, the blog uh, shortly after that, BT actually got in touch and thought it was absolutely hilarious. And uh, we, we did say could they send their apologies on to, to the chap that was there. So that is the story for tonight. Um, I go on holiday tomorrow. Um, now, whilst Harry isn't coming with us, we, we may try and go live from where we're going and do a story time when we're away, but no promises. Harry, I'm sure, will keep you amused while we're away, as I'm sure he will keep Uncle Graham and Auntie Sue amused while we're away as well. Um, but if you, in the meantime, if you want to check out um, any of uh, Harry's antics, then as I say, go to www.spanielharry.com dot co dot uk there's lots and lots of uh, different things on there or if you fancy it go to amazon and, and have a look for his book uh, which is help my dogs on twitter that's for sale on there as well uh, it's got some fantastic interviews uh, with dogs and humans from from twitter um, but if we don't see you we'll see you when we get back from holiday and look after yourselves and it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from the sleepy boy who's actually managed to stay here with you all tonight. Oh, and don't forget, get your tickets for Woofstock UK online, www.woofstockuk.co.uk. Tickets are on sale now, um, and as soon as we get back, we will uh, start posting out the uh, wristbands for 2017 to you guys. But for now, goodbye from me and the sleeping beauty on my shoulder. And see you all soon. Cheers. Bye-bye now. <laughs>